So, Saiti, you are from you are from uh, end of Shakhapatnam, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so, Saiti, yeah, so Saiti, your option is uh, your option is zoology, sir. Zoology. Okay. Zoology. So, tell me, uh, how would zoology be helpful to you as an IAS officer? By the way, I think the first option is IFS, right? IFS. Yeah, so you can tell me how Zoals will be useful to either IFS officer. Sir, zoology would have uh, the connection with respect to environment, sir, because uh, as a part of zoology, we'd be studying about uh, environmental conservation and evolution. So as diplomats, if people have to think about uh, cross-border conservation, or if we will have to prevent cross-border smuggling or trafficking. So in that aspect, knowledge of animals and knowledge of uh, different protect protection zones could be of use. And second, even when it comes to uh, preservation of uh, certain valuable samples, when it comes to evolution, and when it comes to uh, collaboration with different scientists who are experts in uh, evolutionary biology, in that case also, we could have certain uh, usefulness, sir. That is, we can talk with those uh, scientists and we can uh, collaborate in the field of uh, paleoarchaeology, sir. Okay. May I know why you have chosen IFS as the first option? Sir, I have chosen IFS because, uh, one, it would give me the opportunity to represent the country at the highest platform, that is on international platforms. And uh, second, it would uh, give me the opportunity to explore the world in a slightly different manner than the other services would give me. And uh, third, it would give me the opportunity to meet with uh, different people and to travel to different places and thereby find out a little bit more about their governance and about their culture and see how that could be of use to India. Sir. See, there are some places, there are some, for example, Goa Beach or Pondicherry Beach. They are attracting a lot of tourists. Why Vizag Beach is unable to attract tourists at that level, at the level of Kerala, Goa, or Pondicherry? And how can you actually address this issue? And how can you encourage tourism or increase the tourists to Vizag Beach at par with these other beaches? From my limited understanding, the beaches of Goa are slightly different in the culture that they present as well, sir. Uh, they have uh, uh, they have this uh, from France or the tourists from Portugal. So those people can always have the access. So the culture is a little different in uh, Goa, sir. And also the level of marketing. So the question of marketing can also be another adjunct to Vishakapatnam, sir. Vishakapatnam is not marketed as much as the beaches of Goa or as much as the beaches of Kerala are marketed, sir. And apart from that, we have the issue of cleanliness as well, sir. We do have these uh, campaigns where the beach cleaning programs are being conducted. Nevertheless, the kind of facilities when it comes to refreshments or when it comes to entertainment, they are not on par with the other states, sir. So in this view, I would say that uh, instead of looking at attracting as many tourists as Goa or Kerala can, it is important that we develop an, on our own merit or on our own culture, wherein we can provide them with entertainment that is uh, also okay with the residential areas which are there around. And then we can try to have as much uh, good marketing as possible by promoting our cuisine which is uh, domestic as well, sir. So these are the grounds that I can think of, sir. At this oh, one thing, see, year on year, inequality is increasing among people in our country, right? Do you agree with that? Sir, going by the uh, Oxfam report, inequality is increasing in our country, sir. Yes. So what could be done to resolve the issue? Do you think practically in the future, inequality will come down or inequality is supposed to go further higher. See, now there is a debate pertaining to hydrogen-based fuel. Even Mukesh Ambani is also interested in that. Which one would you prefer? Electric vehicles or hydrogen-based vehicles? Sir, 
sir in the short term i would like to go with electric vehicles because of the several government policies that we have at this moment and the kind of uh, pulse of the consumers as well because people have been showing especially the middle class public they have been showing certain interest towards mg and other uh, electric vehicles and we do have infrastructure that is at least building up in our country with respect to electric vehicles but in the future we can always go with a mix of uh, hydrogen based and electric sir yeah regarding russia ukraine issue see do you think the present stand taken by india is a russia will hurt india in medium and long term said so the present stand that is taken by india could have certain impacts in the short term and to some extent medium term sir but in the long term i honestly feel that india does not uh, have to fear anything either from the west or its allies sir the stance that is taken by the country why sir i have few reasons uh to substantiate my point sir so the first thing is india has done what it has done in order to secure its interest that is national interest as pointed out by our honorable external affairs minister s jay shankar also sir that is because if we look at the western countries themselves the europe and north america actually european countries themselves have imported about uh, 60% of oil from russia sir considering the fact that they have been openly challenging russian stance and on the other side they have been importing russian oil it clearly proves that national interests are apart and taking a stance on war is apart so that is why we can say that trying to secure our national interests is first and foremost sir and secondly we have done it is because of the stance that we have taken that we were able to protect our own 22000 indians from ukraine and the neighborhood uh, european countries because we were able to communicate with ukraine and russia as well sir because we kept our communication lines open and uh, thirdly because russia has been a trustworthy defense partner and a friend in general a friendly country in general it is uh, through maintaining a proper stand or abstaining from taking any stand that we can secure interests uh, from russia as well and here we can say that the west has exposed its hypocrisy so rather than going by the western allies it is important that we have uh, taken this particular stand sir okay sahitya when you are talking to naidu sir when he is asking you regarding india stand on uh, ukraine russia issue you said that national interest shall be given importance now if you look at china's stance on several interest issues it seems internationally unethical most of the times it stand on international law or on the pacific region but china says that out of their national interest they are doing so so where do you keep the national interest in with you know in relation to the international principles and ethics yes sir so securing national interests does not mean that one should harm the other individuals or one should abandon the uh, interests that we have with the other countries but it usually means that we display our strategic autonomy that is we should have the choice to select what is good for us and to continue and when it comes to china sir it is not as though china has displayed anything unusual or unnatural chinese uh, have always tried to keep their interests on top of everything and they have uh, really side away from playing by the rule book that is they have uh, their own set of rules by which they operate which is usually different from the international order but when it comes to a nation in general within the rules of the game it is important that we secure our national interests sir. that is uh, real politic should be the way for any country but that does not mean we should harm the other individuals so that is the opinion that i have sir